And thus we have today's world and the human emergency. Exactly as Socrates said, it is not the expression of a violent and destructive human nature. Instead, it's the inevitable result of engines of domination working their institutional violence against human nature and the world. I hope I've made it clear that our only hope for the future is to shut the engines down. Political power must be abolished. Impossible, you say? I think not. If human ingenuity was great enough to create the engine, why shouldn't human ingenuity be able to abolish it? But for this to be possible, we must clearly understand the problem to be solved. As the engineers say, understanding the problem is 90% of solving it. The problem is not human nature, not better or worse systems of power, good rulers versus bad rulers. The problem is political power itself, the domestication of communities. Debating about rival systems or rulers is like debating about better and worse ways to have slavery. There is no good way to do it. The intention to dominate and live at the expense of the community must be condemned. The institutions required to carry out that intention must be abolished. The problem is whether this can be done, and if so, how. Before I discuss that, what would it mean to abolish domination? Domination is a tool for making tools of human beings. Abolishing it would mean liberating people from the status of tools to the status of free men and women. Abolishing it would mean the end of armed central authority, the end of war, the end of privileged rulers living at the expense of humanity in the habitat. Abolishing domination would simply mean a world of peaceful, voluntary communities thriving in harmony with the habitat. There's a word for such a world, a word corrupted almost beyond repair, but I insist that it's the right word and one we should use with pride. Anarchism. Now I don't mean anarchism as a blueprint for some utopia. I mean it as an ideal, a standard of human relations that can guide us in trying to make a better world. The standard is simply that voluntary human relations are the opposite of power relations, and that communities are best organized by voluntary relations. Relations among equals, not between rulers and subjects. The Greek word anarchos means without rulers. Instead of a few people living at the expense of the rest, all living for the good of all. To the extent that a community replaces power relations with voluntary ones, it moves closer to the ideal. If human nature is violent and destructive, then anarchism is a fantasy at best, violence and chaos at worst. But if human nature is ingenious and cooperative, then anarchism is the only way humanity can thrive, and the way we did thrive for a quarter of a million years. In fact, if we define liberty as the absence of domination, we see that liberty is just another name for anarchism. But how would an anarchist world work? Don't ask me. That's for the people of the world to decide. The idea that some people can tell others how to live is the opposite of anarchism. For 6,000 years, more and more of the world's population has lived under domination. Even under this burden, Communities everywhere have adapted brilliantly and made as fit a way of life as possible for themselves. If this adaptive brilliance were freed from domination, people would create ways of living that work better than anything we've seen for ages. Anarchism simply means that they should be free to do so. Now back to the question of abolition. If this seems impossible, we must ask why. No one has ever tried to abolish domination, so this judgment can't be based on historical experience. In fact, the feeling that domination is inevitable comes from domestication. Any animal trainer knows that the animal must understand who's in charge, and that there's no alternative. 
We've lived under human domestication for hundreds of generations now. So naturally we're brought up knowing who's in charge and that there's no alternative. But that is precisely domestication. To accept our captivity and learn to live under the yoke. The first and most important step is to believe that we can be free and that we have every right to throw off the yoke. The feeling that we're powerless is domination's greatest weapon against us. Since no one has ever tried to abolish domination, we don't know whether it can be done or how. But the men who created domination didn't know how to build the engine when they began either. In other words, abolition is an experimental question. We can only find out the answer by doing the experiment. And that means we have to begin a long process of trial and error trying our best, learning from our mistakes, and trying again. But not a random process. We must first reform domination to reduce the human emergency's worst threats, nuclear war and destruction of the habitat. If we work at these reforms with the ultimate goal of abolition in mind, we'll learn a lot about our experimental question. I hope you've noticed that I never mentioned government when I was discussing domination. If government means the institutions that maintain peace and order within and among communities, then domination is obviously the worst possible form of government. The state. I am the state. 